Okay, uh, I'm Paul Bradshaw. Uh, I'm a journalist and uh, former publisher of Straight No Chaser magazine, which I did for 20 years. Uh, I started off as a journalist in about 1973, uh, writing about reggae music. Swifty. Uh, my name is Swifty. My name is Swifty. Graphic designer, 20 years, going strong. Uh, obviously met Mr. Bradshaw. We designed Straight No Chaser for again pretty much 20 years. Firmly involved in the, the map. As we can see, well, the map the, the map is, is is the UK journey, if you like, the reggae. So starting off in Jamaica. We've got reggae music coming into Stamford Hill in North London. On import into R&B record shop, which was owned by a Jewish couple, Rita and Benny King. Then you got people like Chris Blackwell who were in Ireland who was already living in Jamaica and putting music out. Then we got the kind of evolution of, of the music. So you have Chris Blackwell, Millie Small, who's the first hit record number two in the British Hit Parade. That involved Ernie Shrandon who produced that, who was one of the greatest musicians ever out of Jamaica. It was at Studio One. So basically what happens is we take a little journey, you know, and what we have is people like Duke Reed, who then they're supplying record labels like Blue Beat. We have artists like Laura Lakin coming into the country. Basically, I just kind of started on a piece of A4 paper and started tracing my, my own kind of knowledge and then just started adding to different parts. So it's like, what it does is it, you know, we tend to see um, reggae music in this country through the prism of Ireland records. That's been the nature of the kind of publicity that we've had. So what I've done here, this basically changes the whole balance. Because what we see here is an infrastructure that was built around reggae music, which included sound system men like Lloyd Coxon or Count Shelley. It included, you know, the evolution of bands like Steel Pulse, Matumbi, of artists like Linton Crazy Johnson. You know, and at the same time, you know, we have the beginnings of Pirate Radio with um, Dream Broadcasting Company, uh, you know, who were based in Labrador Grove. And you know, you have people like Ronnie Gunn, who changed the who changed the way that reggae was played on the radio. Then he largely did that through the connection to Mikey Dredd, his friendship with Mikey Dredd. We have journalists as well. Carl Gale was a very influential journalist for me. Uh, he produced the Giant Ugly Man magazine and used to write for Black Echoes. He was the first journalist in uh, Britain to write in Patois and was certainly the most radical of all those kind of journalists. Very big influence on me. And then, then we take the journey and then we have, you know, the shops, whether it's like Dub Vendor, Cha Cha Records, we have people like, you know, on new sound labels like this. Basically, it's that journey, you know, where you get the, you know, the new generation comes through, Fashion Records, Saxon Studio, Philip Levi, Smiley Culture. These were the people who changed the face, the face of the music. So in a way, it's not an exclusive map. It's a map that will be kind of added to as we go along. People will always find new things to add to it, but it kind of is a starting point. I mean, you know, the plan is we'll, we'll kind of probably put this onto our website and people can contribute and they can add different stuff. I mean, if you look on the site, you see down here, you got a 19, 1971, this is a 1971 map. List of sound systems compiled by a guy called Penny Reel. And it, even that was 1971. Now in two, 2012, I've got a list of sound systems which encompasses 18 pages of A4 paper. So, you know, this, this is the, you know, it's a journey. This little installation is um, our attempt to begin to document visually the journey that has been taken you know, for the music, whether, they call, whether we want to call it bass culture, I, I just call it ska, reggae music, dub, dancehall. It's a continuum you know, which is going through to today. And I think basically the history needs to be documented, it needs to be visual and it needs to be seen by a new generation to enable them to connect.